This is where your mission begins. If you don't follow standard takeoff procedures, it is also where your mission will end. Launching yourself off a carrier deck inside several tons of metal requires you to have a great deal of faith in your plane and in your flying ability. Generally speaking, taking off is as simple as revving up the engine and releasing the brakes. First, set the throttle to at least 80% power. If you're carrying a heavy bomb load, you may need to set the throttle at 100%. Next, release the brakes. Your plane will begin to move forward. When you have reached a speed of at least 80 to 90 knots, pull gently back on the stick. As soon as you're off the deck, raise your landing gear. Raising your gear reduces the drag on the plane and lets your plane accelerate at a higher rate. During the first few minutes of flight, your main concern should be getting some altitude between you and the ocean. Once you have gained some altitude, begin to turn into formation. During your initial climb, keep your maneuvers simple. Drastic movements in the time right after takeoff are likely to cause your plane to stall, bringing your mission to a quick and soggy end. Landing is one of the most difficult parts of any mission. Add to that a runway that moves and rolls, and it becomes a rookie pilot's worst nightmare. However, with practice comes confidence. Once you are lined up with the end of the carrier, slow to just above stall speed. Make any adjustments gradually. A drastic maneuver will most likely cause you to stall. Next, lower your gear, flaps, and arrestor hook. The plane will begin to slow down so be prepared. Try to land with a nose-up pitch just past the stern of the carrier. As soon as you touch the deck, cut your throttle and engage your wheel brakes. If you feel that you can't make the landing safely, increase your throttle, retract your gear and flaps, and circle around again. Never force a bad landing. Take one high-speed plane, add several others flying close to it, and you have the potential for disaster. Formation flying was developed to lessen the risk associated with flying in close quarters. Maintaining formation allows every pilot in the group to know where every other plane should be. The first type of formation is the echelon. The planes fly behind and to one side of each other, maintaining a diagonal line. This formation is not recommended for more than five planes. The second type of formation is the V. The front two planes fly behind and to the side of the lead aircraft. Any other planes extend the legs in a diagonal fashion. This formation is recommended for bomber groups. Planes may also fly in combination formations. For example, a bomber group will typically fly in a V formation while its escorts fly in echelon formations. The escorts should be positioned 1,000 feet above and away from the bombers in the direction of the threat. This maximizes the offensive power of the fighters and the defensive capabilities of the bomber. Which of the flight, con flight controls are you interested, interested in learning more about? about? These are, these are the ailerons, which allow the plane to roll, roll right and left. Moving the stick, the stick of the left causes the right, the right aileron to tilt down, tilt down, and the left to tilt up, tilt up. This rolls, rolls the plane to the left, left. Moving the, moving the stick to the right causes cause the left aileron to run to tilt down, while while the right aileron tilt on tilt up, causing the causing the plane to bank to the to the right. These are the these are the flaps. They are they are extensions of the wing. The wings may be extended or retracted at at pilot's option. When, ext when extended, the flaps tilt down tilt downward, increasing increasing plane's lift, but but decreasing its speed its speed. Extending the flaps elapse allows the plane to fly at, fly at reduced speed speed without stalling. In the in the game, the flaps are, ext are extended and retracted, retracted using the right and right and left bracket key keys. These are the, these are the elevators, which are control controlled with a flight stick. Stick by moving the stick, the stick forwards or back or backwards, the tilt tilt of the elevators is, cha is changed, causing the causing the plane to pitch up and up and down. 
This is the this is the rudder, which control controls your direction of flight to flight to right and left. Turning the rudder to the to the right moves the plane's plane's nose to the right. Right. Turning the running the rudder to the left moves the moves the plane's nose to the left to the left. An actual plane plane, the rudder is controlled controlled by two pedals on the floor on the floor of the cockpit. In this game, this game, the rudder can be, contr be controlled by the less than, less than, greater than, than, and question mark, key, mark keys, or with, or with optional rudder pedal, pedal controls. Which instrument, instrument would you like to learn about? The altimeter, altimeter is used to measure the, measure the aircraft's altitude, altitude relative to sea level. Sea level. It is not a, not a measure of the distance distance between the ground and and your plane. If you fly over fly over a mountain that is 5000 5, feet high and your and your altimeter reads 66000, 6, there is only there is only 1000 feet be, feet between you and the mountain. Mountain. The short needle short needle indicates thousands thousands of feet while the long the long needle indicates hundreds hundreds. This this is the airspeed indicate indicator. It, me it measures your speed relative, relative to the air around the, around the plane in knot, knots. Keep in mind that your air, your air speed must stay above, stay above a certain point to avoid, to avoid stall. Stall speed, ver speed varies according to, the, according to the type of plane you are, fly you are flying and the weapon, weapon and fuel load, load carried. This is the, this is the tachometer. It, it measures the rotation, rotation per minute of the engine. The engine. It can be it can be used as a relative relative measure of the throttle throttle sing when on the carrier carrier deck or in level in level flight. During a dive or, or climb, the en the engine RPM varies varies drastically, so that so the tachometer readings are no longer an accurate accurate measure of the throttle throttle setting. This is this is the oil pressure gauge gauge. As the name as the name indicates, it me it measures the pressure of the oil the oil pumping through your engine your engine. If the if the needle begins dropping, dropping, you can be pretty sure sure you've sustained dam damage. If at all possible, possible, head for the nearest landing landing strip. Otherwise, otherwise the engine will eventually eventually lose all of its oil, its oil and seize, seize, causing you to sing you to drop like a rock. This is the R O R O C or rate of climb climb indicator. It measures how quickly quickly a plane is gaining or gaining or losing altitude. altitude. If the needle the needle is pointing at the nine o'clock nine o'clock position, then then the plane is maintaining maintaining level flight. The engine temperature temperature gauge indicates the gauge the operating temperature temperature your plane's engine engine. When flying flying normally, the needle rests rests at the middle of the middle of the gauge. Running your engine at high at high RPMs, car carrying a heavy load load or flying without oil without oil will cause your engine your engine to overheat. When this happens, happens, it is likely that your that your engine will be damaged, damaged and cease functioning. Functioning. The artificial horizon, horizon displays your air, your aircraft's pitch and roll and roll. Pitch is the vert the vertical orientation of station of aircraft, while, while roll is the hor the horizontal orientation. In level in level light, the ball is lined is lined up with the horizon line. When you when you bank, the ball the ball tilts in the direction you are you are turning. If you climb or dive or dive, the ball goes ab goes above or beneath beneath the horizon line. This instrument instrument is particularly useful when useful when you cannot see the horizon horizon due to darkness darkness or weather conditions. Perhaps the most perhaps the most important instrument instrument is your compass. When you leave the carrier carrier, you will only have this of this your map to guide you guide you to the target and then and then back home again. When the compass, the compass indicates you are flying north, flying north, you are on course, on course zero, 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 zero. When it points, when it points east, you are, you are on course 90, 90. South is course 180, and west is, is 270. The fuel gauge, fuel gauge measures the amount of the amount of fuel left in the plant in the plant's tanks. There are actually two, only two needles, a white, a white one which measures the measures the main tanks. And a, and a dimmer one, which, show, which shows the fuel in any in any external tanks tanks are carrying. When the external the external tanks run dry dry, you should consider consider jettisoning them them to lighten your load load and improve your improve your plane's performance. The gauge labels labeled MP monitor monitors your manifold pr fold pressure. 
Manifold pressure is pressure is measure of the air the air pressure inside the engine the engine. The high, the higher the pressure, the the more power you have avail have available. If pressure begins begins to drop suddenly suddenly or has reached zero zero, the engine engine has probably been damaged and you should you should consider getting home home or bailing out out.